Now this is quite amazing. Um, I did make a video about this before, but I I, I stopped and just did the first uh, 32 minutes basically. Concerning the Dots Ministry, listen to what is said. I mean, it, it seems. I mean, in her speech, it seems like she knows what these verses mean. Um, and I'd like a response from this lady, uh, if I it's could. It's the verse of the century. It's like we have to take the whole Bible and say, okay, everything's got to come together to make one big picture, not little tiny pictures that don't don't tend to go along. So, okay. when a person is baptized, it's kind of a reminder of a couple of things. First, before they go into the water, it's, it's, it's kind of a reminder that outside of this water, I'm a sinner, I was separated from God, um, and, and I, I recognize that. Then I get into the water, and and it's kind of a picture that that when when I go under, that God is saying, look, he's he's died for my sins, all the sin that I was up here. He has buried me with my sin and with him, and when I'm raised back up out of the water, I'm a new person. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm I'm trying. Correct. It's kind of a a picture to tell myself and to everybody else that I'm no longer the person that I was before. It, it almost seemed like she understood it, right? Um, that we are born anew in baptism. The baptism of Christ is not John's baptism. Born of water and spirit. Born again. We are born again in baptism. In fact, Paul compares it to circumcision. Right? Um, and even makes an allusion to the crossing of the Jordan, that Israel, this is Israel, the people who remained back in Egypt were no longer Israel. And the mark, uh, the covenant sign, the, the sign of the new, co the sign of the old covenant was the circumcision mark. It was only on the men, but it was for all the people, you know. Now baptism is our induction into the new covenant. Second uh, Peter, or First Peter 3.21, baptism now saves you. Not for the washing away of dirt, <coughs> but through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, having been buried with him in, in baptism, we, the old man is buried and the new man arises. Um, buried with him through baptism into death, so as with Christ raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we all might, we, we might walk in newness of life. This might, I would actually, we might walk in check out the Greek word for, that's in there and he says it again that was Romans 4 6 4 Colossians 2 12 having been buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead one Lord one faith one baptism is Ephesians 4, 5 um, baptism is not a work of man it's a work of God what about the thief on the cross yeah, Christ said, you will be with me this day in paradise. Every Christian, everywhere, at all times, for the first 1,600 years. See, this is these people are still under the papacy. They're rebellious children of the papacy, but they're, they're, they're children of the papacy. Um, because if you were go by, Scripture says, you know, go ye therefore, baptizing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? That's the mechanism by which all the nations shall be saved. If somebody has faith in Christ and they don't have, can't get to the waters of baptism. Ignatius of Antioch <coughs> wrote a letter in A.D. 90. He was a disciple of John. He was a student under the Apostle John. He knew Peter and Paul. He's actually mentioned in the Gospels. Um... He said, if you can't baptize in living water, baptize in stagnant water. If you can't baptize in stagnant water, uh, just pour water over you. If you can't do that, then sprinkling. Um, and if you can't do that, then you're, you know, like, talking about people in prison for, um, you know, they're going to be executed by Rome. Your blood will be your baptism. If you are a Christian, you will be baptized. The idea that there are Christians out there that don't know they're supposed to be baptized, don't know the gospel. What are the two traditions that we're taught to keep? I mean, ch just type in traditions. 
the traditions of men and the traditions of the apostles. Hold firm to the traditions which I have taught you, whether by word of mouth or letter from us. The church is the faith, the church is the pillar of truth. The house of God and the pillar of truth. Um, the Eucharist, this is my body and blood. I mean, when you say, uh, no one comes to the Father but through the Son. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Christ said, this is my body and blood. Why doesn't the Protestants take him seriously? Again, I'm not a Roman Catholic, but it seems like they're only reacting, they're protesting against what the Catholics believe, even though it's it's biblical. That I mean, I'm not going to get into the issue of transubstantiation, but... Um, Uh, you know, I'm not Roman Catholic, but <coughs> it is it is pretty strange. Um, baptism. Where can you ever find that it's an outward sign of an inward change? This is the mechanism by which all people are going to be saved. Are those who have faith in Christ, are, can they, are they saved? Yes. But do Christians get baptized? Yes, they do. And what does it do? It imparts the Holy Spirit and um, newness of life. Now, what if somebody doesn't have time to be baptized or this or that? There's no such thing as, oh, I don't have time for God. No, Lord. Lord means master. No master. How could you actually be serving a master if you're saying no? Uh, in fact, when Christ said, you will have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, disciples walked away from him. So this guy said, no, we're not doing They perfectly understood him. He didn't say, oh, they, they misunderstood or anything. He kept saying it. He was very upfront about this stuff. And baptism, I challenge anybody, and I want to know from her, uh, because this is the infection. This is how bad the infection started by man-made vain imaginations, man-made philosophies, the traditions of men have infected, that somebody can actually read the words of the gospel and actually say it imparts newness of life but it's an outward sign to people and to myself. No, it's not. Salvation is not a work of man. It's not of us. God saved us before, you know, God saved us while we were still dead in our sin. Baptism is a work of God. You have nothing to do with it. You're baptized, you come up, right? The church does it to you. The church is the body of Christ. Carried, uh, Sent, uh, given the command to keep these traditions. Again, people say, I mean, look at when the tra traditions of the apostles versus traditions of men. Type it in a blue letter Bible. Look it up in uh, Strong's Concordance, the word traditions. Um, just like, look up the word baptism, the Greek, where it is appear. How the termites have spread. I, I mean, this is unacceptable for a Christian to say, and she's pretending to teach people. I mean, I haven't even touched on the ahistorical stuff. Uh, baptism for the remission of sins was not known before John the Baptist. Yes, it was. That was a Jewish thing for 500 years before that. And John's baptism is not the baptism of Christ. Christ, this is how we are born anew, through water and spirit. The Great Commission, that's just a sign for people. It's just to show people that you're so righteous, that you're now, oh, I'm, I have enough faith where I'm safe. No, it's not a work. It's not, it's not your assertion. It's not your belief. It's grace of God, you having no part in it, so that no one may boast. It's of God, not you. What about the thief on the cross? Yes, Christ said, you will be with me this day in paradise. Uh, was the Great Commission given yet? Believe and be baptized. Right. But yet, this lady claims that somebody can believe in Christ, yet think that they don't need to be baptized or not know about baptism. How is that possible? 